Uh, next, we have Nikki Bright, who will be talking to us about goals for raising menopause awareness. And I'm really pleased that this topic has come up. I work with a lot of women going through the menopause, so I'm really looking forward to it. Morning, Nikki. Oh, Nikki, you're, you're on mute, Nikki. <laughs> Yes, thank, thanks ever so much, Benny. Yeah, it's the one certainty that we all have, you know, not all of us will get pregnant, but all of us will go through the menopause at some point or another. So that's one reason why it's really important, I think, to raise awareness of, uh, of the menopause and why I've been doing the work that I have been doing. Um, so there's various other reasons. I'm just going to show you a slide that um, sort of identifies why uh, there, this is so very important. Um, as I've said, everybody will go, every woman um, will go through the menopause at some at some point. And, uh, you know, this is the fastest growing demographic in the workplace and even more of us um, are in leadership positions. So it's important uh, to be able to manage that when we are leading as well as, you know, knowing more about it so we can lead others. And 25%, um, a quarter of women consider leaving the workplace um, because of the symptoms and managing their symptoms. And 12% actually do leave the workplace. And I want to raise, one of my goals um, is to raise awareness to allow women to have more financial independence. Of course, women don't make so many pensions contributions when they take time out uh, to have children, but it, it, it's a double whammy if we also leave work earlier than we might do otherwise because we're not feeling like we're coping with those menopause symptoms. So, you know, that, that has a financial implication for women, their families, their communities. And I want to help um, women, you know, have more financial independence and choice over what it is that they want to do um, with their future. <clears throat> so I'm just going to drop that slide now, but I hope that's outlined to you why that's so very, very important. Um, and I think there's a key difference between understanding between um, menopause and perimenopause. Certainly when I went through the, the menopause I uh, or perimenopause, I was thinking, well, I'm, I'm too young for this. You know, menopause happens when, when you're 50s and, and sort of later on. Um, and what you don't realise is that although the average age for menopause is 45, uh, between 45 and 55, and within that, the average age is 51. The perimenopause is the period before you go through the menopause. And the perimenopause can last between you know, four to six years or longer indeed. So that means that if your menopause is starting at age or you go through the menopause at 45, that potentially you can be starting your perimenopause in your late 30s, early 40s as well. So one of my goals is to make sure that women realise that they may well be going through the perimenopause during their 40s and for them to get some support during that time. Um, partly because some women find that their symptoms are even worse um, and more difficult to manage during the perimenopause than, um, than menopause. And this is um, the age <clears throat> as well, 45 to 55, when uh, actually potentially there's a perfect storm with menopausal symptoms um, and it's the highest rate um, uh, of suicide in women um, at this at this age as well. So we, you know, there's a there's a really strong imperative to su to support women through their through their symptoms. So your perimenopausal symptoms might start in your you know early forties, as I've said, and the symptoms can, can last a, a long time. Uh, some women find that their perimenopause menopausal symptoms continue for the rest of their lives. About one in a hundred women find that, <clears throat> and um, you know. Getting some support for those symptoms is important. About a quarter of women say that their symptoms are really severe. Um, and about, sorry, a quarter of women go through the menopause and their symptoms are fine and they, they manage, manage perfectly well. About a third of women find that their symptoms are, are quite severe um, and debilitating. And then there's everybody in between. And I think it's really important that um, those women understand sufficiently not to just soldier on, but also to ch make changes in their lifestyle, um, and so on that will help them to improve the quality of their life, the way that they're managing those symptoms. And therefore, as I say, potentially, if they want to continue to work and therefore have that financial independence and choice um, over what they do with their lives, rather than relying on their family and friends and communities and so on. And each woman has an individual cocktail of over 40 symptoms. Um, and those 40 symptoms 
uh, you know, can can range from you know uh, things that are seemingly seemingly small, uh, like itchy skin and so on. Although that's quite debilitating if you uh, you, you know you can feel like your flesh is is creeping um, to the classic symptoms of um, hot flushes and brain fog and um, mood swings and uh, so on. Many women are wrongly uh, diagnosed with depression and given uh, anti uh, antidepressants when um, hormone replacement therapy, which is much better than it used to be, um, can uh, alleviate the symptoms. And the nice guidelines are that for women, the, the, the HRT should be the first line um, to see whether uh, the hormones and, and balancing out hormones better um, helps women. Of course, there's women for whom antidepressants are absolutely right and, and proper, but many, many are uh, many, many are misdiagnosed. So um, I've, I've got some goals. It's not just my goals. These are goals of some menopause awareness campaigns. So I'm just going to show you a slide now with those um, goals for increasing awareness. So there's three sort of campaigns, Make Menopause Matter, run by Diane Danzebrink. Uh, she's got a um, online petition for people to sign to raise awareness. Um, there's the Menopause Revolution, which is something that was a cross-party uh, campaign that was set up by Caroline, Carolyn Harris, who is the MP for Swansea, but it's got cross-party support. And um, there's a new campaign, the Menopause Mandate, which she has, this is a sort of menopause revolution has morphed into a menopause mandate. Um, and this is um, in Parliament Square um, last, last year. You can just about make me out at the back there. Um, the three goals, which are really important to me, um, and I hope should be important to everybody else, are that all GPs and healthcare professionals should receive um, uh, medical training. It's not compulsory part of the GP curriculum, unbelievably. Um, and so, you know, more GPs and healthcare professionals need to re receive this mandatory men menopause training. And you will have heard in the news this week that, you know, there's um, people talking about the need for a menopause check at 45. Um, and uh, it, it, yes, absolutely, it's, it certainly would be helpful uh, to do that. But actually, why don't we, rather than having a specific thing, why don't we, you know, most people have, have their, um, their smear tests and so on. Why don't we make sure that everybody uh, in the healthcare professionals and GPs knows about menopause so that they can talk about it at normal routine appointments that are already existing rather than creating something new? Anyway, um, the second uh, aim, goal, is uh, to increase awareness and guidance in the workplace. And that's something that I do regularly going into schools um, and different companies across uh, the country to raise awareness uh, around menopause. I started at the Girls' Schools Association um, Heads Conference in 2019 and um, now, you know, going to lots of different schools talking about raising awareness uh, for, for not just women, for men as well, to understand what their partners and so on are going through. And uh, also age-appropriate education on menopause in the RSE curriculum. It is in the RSE curriculum to, to be taught, but there's, you know, obviously work to be done in making sure um, that that happens and that it's revisited in a sort of spiral curriculum. So those are the sort of those campaign goals. And to support those, I've got my own goals on my next slide. Um, my own goals are that, you know, everybody knows about um, the, the menopause. Um, everybody uh, is therefore supported to uh, continue to work, to maintain or gain their financial independence in their later years. And for me, it's perimenopause and the understanding of perimenopause that's so very important in that, because that's where people uh, start to have uh, you, you know, some real difficulties with managing their symptoms. I also, you know, aim to help more, more relationships potentially survive perimenopause by increasing awareness with men 
and women. And law menopause talks a lot about how menopause impacts women with their uh, divorce settlements and so on, and how how you know it has an impact. So we've got you know relationship difficulties, we've got um, mental health difficulties, um, and so on. All of which we can support ourselves even better with with a bit of more awareness. And my ultimate aim is that more women basically have more choice over their lives because they understand what's going on for them. Because in my day, it, your, your cycles and your periods were talked about in terms of not getting pregnant and then they stop. And so, you know, it's too many women um, don't know what's happening to them and what's going to happen to them. So those are those are my goals, really, and the goals I think I hope that you would share as well in terms of uh, in terms of increasing menopause awareness. And I just want to signpost you to the menopause awareness toolkit that I put together with um, Sarah Davies of Talking Menopause for diverse educators. It's there. Um, it's well used um, and it's useful because the resources are teacher focused, education focused. And I'd also like to direct you towards the Newson Health. Um, both the Balanced Menopause app to track your symptoms in the same way that you might track on a period tracker um, and also loads of great leaflets for, for partners as well as women about um, perimenopause and menopause and different conditions. And, you know, if you think that you have got uh, can't take HRT because of breast cancer, finding out more about um, what's possible now with this more modern HRT. So whistle stop tour um, around my goals for menopause there. Um, and I hope that that is really helpful um, to everybody in, in terms of increasing menopause awareness uh, so that we can reach those goals. So super helpful. I've listened to you so many times now talk about the menopause and I learned something new um, every time. And it was lovely to meet you in person um, this week Indeed. as well for the first time. Twitter friends finally meeting in real time. Um, and I was going to ask you about the app because you know, I know we've we've talked about this, about I'm in, I'm in that group. I'm in my early 40s and I wouldn't necessarily say I was going through the perimenopause. But when you begin to track all the different things, you yeah. might get that pattern. So, so this yeah. app is a way for you to perhaps bring together lots of little ailments that you don't see as being that bigger picture. Absolutely, absolutely. And I wish that it had been around when I was going through my perimenopause because it would have put things together. Of course, our hormones fluctuate. So the symptoms come and go. So you sort of think, oh, that's odd. And then it goes and you don't think about it. And then, oh, that's odd, something else. So this pulls everything together. You can see the monthly fluctuations. Um, and a friend of mine said it's really, really useful because you can actually see when things are coming and going, um, mm -hmm. and when they're more severe and not. And so what you can do then is you can actually print it off, download it and take it to your healthcare professional and say, this is my pattern and therefore I would like to try X, Y or Z. Um, so it means that you've got evidence i suppose yeah um, absolutely you know. when you've got a doctor who's not listening or a doctor who yeah. hasn't had that training isn't well, aware because, yeah i've got so many girlfriends and i've seen it with, on twitter all the time with women in our network who are going to the doctors but they're being gaslit really and told yeah. there's nothing wrong with them and being and being pushed yeah. back you're and, too young to go through the menopause because you're not 45 yet well yes yeah. i am look it should be symptoms led. Ignore the stuff about blood tests. News and Health yeah. say, you know, follow the symptoms. It's the symptoms that lead. You might have blood tests later to see what's happened with your levels. Mm. Um, and, so and if you're very early on, um, you know, potentially you'll have blood tests then. But for, for you know, usually, actually, it should be symptoms led, the diagnosis. Absolutely. And if we take it to the workplace, then we've got lots of school leaders on the call, head teachers, people with the, the power to perhaps look at this idea of a menopause awareness policy. What are the yep. kind of things that you'd like to see? What are your goals for schools? What, what could oh, schools be doing? Yeah, goal, goals for schools are that people, uh, you know, support women going through the menopause. And um, that doesn't, you don't, it, you don't need a specific menopause policy, although it does help. But there should at least be guidance on the menopause in a well-being policy, uh -huh. um, so that there's something specific. But um, you can't. It isn't. A, it won't be a one-size-fits-fits-all policy because with the over 40 symptoms and each woman having their own individual cocktail this is why the trackers are so very important because oh. you might have itchy skin and some my, another friend had bad breath and then another friend you know had heart palpitations so it, it varies so oh. much from woman to woman that you can't just say oh i'll give you the perimenopause menopause 
reasonable adjustments list mm. um, because actually they need to be tailored to you um, yeah. and you you know you need to take control yourself as well in terms of managing your lifestyle and mm. uh, you know getting the support that you need but it's also I guess knowing what are those reasonable adjustments that we can make in the workplace for example are there rooms with air conditioning some yeah. rooms have some rooms haven't got and and I think yeah. that flexible working as well and like it might not be a, a cited reason for why people want flexible working but it could be an underlying reason why people do want to work flexibly Indeed, indeed. You know, coming in a little bit later because you have been up all night, you know, quite often you'll get heart palpitations at three, four in the morning, be awake for an hour and a half mm. and then sleep. And we all know that, you know, then you you feel dead. Mm. Uh, so actually being able to come in a bit later or rest areas within schools where, you know, uh, in, a, in a break you could go and, you know, just have a snooze. I know that's sort of anathema in schools, really, but actually it would really help you then keep yourself going um, more google you... and facebook than schools but why not do you mean let's yeah, why not? disrupt things why here not? And you know? absolutely yeah. And my final question, going back to the curriculum, because I know we've talked about this before. I mean, where so where would you see it sitting? Like key stage four, key stage five, RSHE lessons. Where where do you think where's age appropriate for us to be learning about the menopause? Do you think? I think it has to keep. We have we have to keep coming back to it. Spiral um, curriculum because you know what if a child is away on that one day when you give them the one hour of menopause? Uh, you know that's no good either. It uh, needs to be a constant co communication, a constant conversation. And I think it's perfectly possible to say to you know younger students in key stage age two you know ho your hormones change throughout you know you, you sometimes you get wonky hormones and um actually you know when you when you get older your, your hormones might be wonky and you know and then you come back to it later on so i th i think it's appropriate for quite young children actually um, final point because i know we've talked about the wonky hormones before and about the concoction of having a mother going through the menopause and a teen going through hormones in the same household that can be quite catastrophic can't it Absolutely. And I think school leaders see that and school teachers see mm. that all the time, mm. don't they, without necessarily realising it. But it can be really helpful. And there's some really great people out there doing some work. Joe Weatherall, for example, uh, supporting women with teenagers who are going through the menopause themselves. So, um, yeah, recognise it in those around and, uh, you know, offer support as well. So Brilliant. Nikki, thank you so much for joining us. Lovely to see you and listen to you as always.